Now we will talk about <coughs> the magnetizing field. So um, we're going to start with an experiment. The experiment is as follows. We're going to take a bar magnet, as you can see in the figure, and we're going to try to magnetize it using a mag magnetic field or magnetizing force, so-called. And uh, the way we apply this field, we apply the field um, either along its length, that is parallel to H, and we measure um, the magnetization curve, M versus H, and then we're going to apply it um, along its width and remeasure magnetization versus field uh, magnetization curve. So if you perform this experiment for a bar magnet, what do we see? So we apply the magnetic field uh, parallel to its uh, length, which is the height h here, and we, we will see that it's going to magnetize in the direction of the external uh, field and in the second scenario we're applying the field parallel to its width w and it will magnetize uh, again parallel to the external magnetic field but there is one big difference in the magnetization curves we see that in the first scenario when we're applying uh, the the field in the direction of its length it is much easier to magnetize if we try to do it along its width, it is harder to magnetize. So it takes a higher magnetic field in order to reach the saturation magnetization, MS. So basically, we're trying to um, address this issue. So our big question is, why are these two magnetization curves different. So why does it matter if we apply the magnetic field uh, in one direction or the other with respect to the magnet? Well, uh, this magnetization uh, forming between the two ends of the magnet is basically telling us that we're forming uh, magnetic poles here and uh, these magnetic poles will be creating also a magnetic field that is opposing the applied field. And this opposing field we're going to call the magnetization field. Okay, so uh, my observation is that there is a north pole forming here, a south pole forming here, and magnetization points from south to north. In this scenario, there is a south pole forming on this face and a north pole forming on this face and magnetization points in this direction. Okay, so if the magnetic material has finite length, we see the generation of magnetic poles, the north and south pole, near its ends, gives rise to A magnetic field opposing the applied field. So which way is this magnetic field pointing now? Well, uh, we see that here uh, the North Pole 
uh, is on the top, the south pole is at the bottom, so there will be a magnetic field pointing from the north pole towards the south pole, and that is uh, what we call HD. So in this case, in the second scenario, we have the north pole on the right hand side, south pole on the left hand side, so we will have a magnetic field created pointing from north pole to south pole that is the demagnetizing field. Alright, so this opposing field, you can see it's always pointing in, uh, in a direction that opposes the external magnetic field that is trying to magnetize the magnet. So this opposing uh, field is called the demagnetization field which we show with H sub D. And this demagnetization field depends on the geometry and magnetization M of the material. So let's analyze the field components uh, inside a bar magnet. So if we are looking at the external field created by this bar magnet, we see that we have uh, field lines coming out of the North Pole, approaching the South Pole, so we have uh, field lines be that are being generated uh, by this. And now we have found that on top of this, from North Pole to South Pole, we have a magnetic field that is called the demagnetizing field. So we have HD here that is pointing from the North Pole to the South Pole. So this is basically a H field inside a bar, outside, inside and outside of a bar magnet. Now, if I look at magnetization, magnetization is a vector that points from South Pole to North Pole and that is inside the magnet. So here is magnetization M that points from South Pole to North Pole. So we have the magnetization vector inside a bar magnet. So as a result of uh, these two, so we have uh, magnetization that points from south to north and then we have the demagnetizing field that is pointing from north to south so it's opposing the magnetization that is the demagnetizing field HD at the end we have a magnetic induction B that is pointing from south to north. So this is going to be our B field. So if you plot the B field inside and outside of a bar magnet, so that's the magnetic induction inside and outside of a bar magnet, well it would look uh, similar to the H field outside, so you will have north field lines coming out south field lines approaching and then we have uh, obviously field lines from north to south here and then the magnetic induction basically B field inside will point from south to north so it will be the combination of the two effects of uh, magnetization and the demagnetizing field. So uh, that is basically uh, what we see 
And if we try to uh, put a bar magnet, a, a compass inside a bar magnet, what would we see? Uh, so that would be an interesting uh, thing to try. So if you put a compass inside a bar magnet, if you manage to do that, so here's the South Pole, here's the North Pole, and you put your compass inside, uh, which way will the compass point? Well, you will see that the north will point here, the south will point here. So basically, it's going to uh, tell you the direction of the demagnetizing field. Um, because it will see the, the two poles, south and north poles, it will uh, try to interact with. Okay. Now, uh, that's all good. I would like to go back to our experiment and try to explain why the magnetization curve of 1 and 2 are different. Okay, so uh, let's talk about the magnetic moment that we are creating or the magnetization, which is magnetic moment per volume that we are creating in the two configurations. So now, going back to our experiment, we will find that uh, for a given magnetization, M that we have obtained in both cases 1 and 2 uh, we have created a magnetic moment per volume right so magnetization is magnetic moment per volume the volume is the same for the two scenarios so the magnetic moment that it the magnetization of the first case and magnetization of the second case are the same, then the magnetic moment you have created between the two ends should be the same. So the magnetic moment uh, that we have created is the same. So, the, so we see that uh, we're going to have um, the magnetic moment which is a magnetic moment in CGS units was, remember, P times L, the distance between the two poles. So this will imply that, uh, that uh, in our case, the magnetic moment for the first case is the, the pole strength that we are uh, producing, P1, multiplied with H, and in the second case, the magnetic moment that we're producing is P2 uh, multiplied by W. So this is telling us that there is a relationship between the pole strengths that we have created uh, in order to reach the same magnetic moment. So we can see that uh, since we have uh, the width is less than the height, this implies the pole strength that we are creating in the second scenario is greater than the pole strength that we, are, that we have to create in the first scenario in order to reach the same magnetization reading. So we find that the pole strength in the second case will be higher. And additionally, the distance between the poles which is W is lower compared to the other scenario. Okay, so uh, if we calculate the demagnetizing field for these two scenarios, so we will see that the demagnetizing field
that we have created in the first scenario is the pole strength that we have created in the first scenario divided by h square so you remember the field is pole strength divided by h square in cgs and h is larger and p1 is lower so this is going to be less than the demagnetizing field we will create in the second scenario which is the second pole strength which is larger divided by w square which is smaller than h so it's clear that i have a larger demagnetizing field in the second scenario so when i apply an external magnetic field external magnetic field H to the second case the effective uh, magnetizing field is going to be reduced more due to larger demagnetizing field in the second scenario and in order to compensate for this we need to apply more external fields to get to the same magnetization M. Okay, so basically that explains it. Because I have a larger demagnetizing field in the second scenario, then I have to apply more external field to compensate for it in order to reach the same uh, magnetization uh, value. Now this demagnetizing field obviously depends on the geometry and magnetization so we can say the following for the demagnetization field or demagnetizing uh, field HT this depends on two things it depends on the magnetization M of the material because that will determine the pole strength and the shape of the specimen the shape dimensions of the specimen So this will give us the pole separation. So this demagnetizing field we have found out is opposing uh, the saturation magnet, uh, magnetization or the magnetization that we have obtained. So if I plot HT and M on the same uh, figure, you can see that M will point from uh, south to north. and uh, B points from uh, south to north as well um, because we have the uh, subtractive effect of the demagnetizing field. So the demagnetizing field is given as minus uh, ND a demagnetizing factor times magnetization. So this is how it is done in SI units. Uh, however, in CGS units, the demagnetizing field, as you know, uh, the, the H field does not have the same unit as magnetization. In order to get the same dimension, you have to multiply it by 4 pi. So minus 4 pi demagnetizing factor times M in uh, CGS EMU units. Okay, so in this case, 
magnetization is in amps per meter in this case magnetization is in emu per centimeter cube this nd which depends on the geometry is called demagnetizing factor okay so this demagnetizing factor is uh, going to be dimensionless in SI because you have amps per meter amps per meter uh, and here it's going to have a unit it's Ørsted uh, divided by EMU per centimeter cube so it's Ørsted centimeter cube divided by electromagnetic units that will be the unit of the demagnetizing uh, factor so once again this demagnetizing factor depends on the geometry of the specimen okay so let's summarize what we said we have talked about demagnetizing fields so we started out with an experiment uh, where we see a bar magnet that we are trying to magnetize parallel to its length and parallel to its width if we try to magnetize it parallel to its length it's much easier to magnetize than it's parallel to its width so why are these two MH curves different because we're going to generate uh, magnetic poles near its ends and they will give rise to a demagnetizing field which depends on the geometry and magnetization and if we assume that uh, we have the same magnetization uh, in the two scenarios for example the saturation magnetization uh, since the magnetic moment is pole strength p multiplied by l the distance between plus p and minus p north and south poles uh, the volume is the same for the two cases so we should have the same magnetic moment total magnetic moment created that means p1 times h it must be equal to p2 times w if the width is less than height then you must have a larger pole strength created in the second scenario in order to reach the same magnetization value and uh, this demagnetizing field we can show it points from north to south as you can see here magnetization points from south to north and magnetic induction uh, as a result points from south to north in the direction of magnetization inside the bar magnet uh, if you put if you were to put a compass inside the bar magnet it would point in the direction of the demagnetizing field the north pole will be attracted by the south pole and the south pole attracted by the north pole of the bar magnet now uh, basically since we see that the demagnetizing field in the second scenario which is p2 divided by w square should be larger the effective magne magnetizing field that we have is lowered by this amount so we're going to see that we need to apply a larger magnetic field in order to reach the same magnetization this demagnetizing uh, field or demagnetization field depends on the geometry of the specimen and it depends on the magnetization it is minus nd times m or minus 4 pi nd times m um, the nd is called demagnetizing factor which is geometry dependent factor so we have uh, a correction factor here so that will determine how much demagnetizing field we are producing depending on the geometry as you can see here we have found out that the demagnetizing field depends on the ratio for example uh, width to height